got his points early. And Richardson continues to play well. Let's take a look at the final stats from that Northwestern game on Saturday. We can see Indiana shot the basketball extremely well. This, the number of times this year Indiana has been up over 50%. Northwestern shot the ball well, obviously, of an 18 to nothing start. They're out of the game early. Free throws, Indiana continues to win basketball games, getting to the free throw line 31 times compared to 15. Northwestern just needed to get there a few more times. They were very good once they did get there. Indiana continues to rebound the ball very well. And look at that, under 10 turnovers. That is not easy to do no matter who you're playing, so Indiana taking care of the basketball. And some great individual performances as well on Saturday, led by A.J. Guyton. He got his points early in that run. There you see he ended up with 24 points on the afternoon. Sometimes uh, you can't figure out where A.J. is when he starts the ball game, and he won't, maybe he won't come on until in the second half, but watching him warm up, he was on his tiptoes. You can see him here, changes direction, hits one. He's gonna come around the corner here, get another one off of a, off of a break. He was, and then down, the, and we can't show it, but down on the other end of the court, he played defense for the whole, the whole first half. So that was one Larry of the very, very best games. Larry Richardson also playing well. He's 18 of 21 from the field in his last four yeah. games. Well, from the field, <laughs> he's only missed three shots in four games. Every now and then you read that the, a guy's in a zone. I think Larry's been on another planet. You know, I, I, I wish we knew what planet that was. I got some other guys I'd like to send there. Inside, inside, the rebound. Throws up a nice little soft hook here. You know what he's done the last two games better than anything else is let the game come to him. He hasn't tried to force anything. Also for Indiana, a special homecoming welcome for Luke Jimenez. He's from Redwood Falls, Minnesota, not too far away from Minneapolis. He had three three-point shots in the game against Northwestern. Luke lost his touch for about two weeks. Yeah, he was throwing up gopher balls for a long time. He, he, he came in early in the day. He worked on his shot. Boy, you can see him drill one. He come down on the other side here now and drill one from the other side. He's got his confidence back. And uh, if, if uh, tonight you see Minnesota sucking back in that zone and, and playing that box and one on, uh, on A.J., Luke may be very, very important to us. Indiana's had several guys come in and play a nice role. Uh, Kyle Hornsby's come in nice, Jared Odell, and that'll be a key. One of the things Minnesota may do is play a bigger lineup tonight uh, than we're used to seeing in most Big Ten teams. Well, of course, when you uh, they only got to put one guy on there and have a bigger lineup with that giant inside. We cannot allow Presbyterian to catch the ball down deep. We cannot guard him one on one. Spent most of the last two days in our defensive plans of trying to keep the ball away from him, which which kicks out some other guys. So uh, they, they've got some big folks, and I just, we'll see them all tonight. And this is a tough place to play because the last three times Indiana has been ranked in the top 25 and day to visit to Williams Arena. They've gone home to defeat the last time, last year in overtime, Minnesota beat Indiana. I don't want to hear that. You talk to him. I don't want to talk to him. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> but it, it, it is a very difficult place to play. And even though Minnesota has not really played well since Indiana last played them, they're a, they're a team that has shot very poorly from the free throw line. They were in the Purdue game. They shoot 7 of 22 from the free throw line. So, uh, you know, but they're starting to come around. They had Wisconsin beat the other night. Wisconsin makes a last second shot. They're a team that uh, is dangerous. I feel like they're a very dangerous team. That you out rebounds them assist wise. Michael Lewis handing out a number of assists. And of course, bench points has been important all year for Indiana. They outscored Minnesota 21 to 8. Minnesota has lost six of the last seven Big Ten ball games. that lone win to Northwestern. They're currently in 10th place in the Big Ten. But Joel Prisbilla is having a wonderful year. Seven foot one. Does it like to be? Ohio State obviously uh, has really started playing well. But Michigan State got knocked off last night by Purdue. Uh, you know, is, is, you think about baseball terminology, you know, like a pitcher who gets two or three runs in an inning, he likes to go back out there and shut that team down the next inning, not, you know, not give the, you know, everybody else any momentum. Indiana got a big win from Purdue last night. They'd like to go on the road at Minnesota and get a big win and not, you know, not give anybody else any momentum tonight and stay right there where they are. But three times in the 90s as they take on the Golden Gophers. Indiana's 17-3 start is its sixth best ever under Bob Knight. And each time that the Hoosiers have started 17-3 or better, they've either won the Big Ten Championship or advanced to the Final Four. Minnesota had a great chance to come from behind and win last Saturday, but they lost a heartbreaker as Wisconsin scored the game's final five points. It doesn't get any easier tonight. The Gophers know Bob Knight won't be passing out any gifts. Game of the year as they take on the Golden Gophers. 
And a Big Ten championship for Indiana became a little bit more plausible after last night's game where Michigan State lost to Purdue. It might be that by midnight tonight, the Hoosiers will be leading the Big Ten. And welcome inside Williams Arena. I'm Dick Bramer along with John Laskowski. Indiana is very, very good and very, very balanced, but they have the one thing that I know Minnesota would like to have in a lot of teams. They've got that go-to guy in A.J. Guyton. A.J. Guyton's having a terrific senior year. He leads the Big Ten in scoring, and he could be a first-team All-American before it's all said and done. 21 points a game. He shoots very well from the outside. He doesn't need a lot of room to get that jump shot off. He's worked hard on his move to the left. He also can drive to the basket and get the bucket that way as well. Now, Minnesota doesn't have a go-to guy, at least not yet, but Joel Prisbill has played very well in his sophomore year, even in a loss in Bloomington earlier this year. He did play well against Indiana, 22 points and 11 rebounds. He leads the conference in rebounding, also in field goal percentage with shots like that. Nice moves inside. He's a real offensive threat for Minnesota. How good, how balanced is Indiana? Michael Lewis may end up as their all-time assist leader, and he doesn't even start. We'll be back with the starters in a moment. 59 at Indiana. He's fifth all-time in collegiate Division I wins. And uh, he'll have this Sagamore starting lineup. There you see for Indiana, a senior-dominated lineup, four, three seniors and a sophomore. Kirk Haston, the big man inside for Indiana, had a big game against Minnesota the last time these two teams met. For Minnesota, there you see Priz Billa and Bickerstaff, but Terrence Simmons is a guy coming on his first year here at Minnesota after transferring. He's the most athletic player that Minnesota has. And Dan Munson hoping to get his team back in the winning track tonight. Tough assignment against the nationally ranked Hoosiers when we come back. Indiana has been notorious this year for getting big runs they did in the first game against Minnesota, and they need to get to the foul line. They outshot Indiana from the free throw line in the first game. And as you saw in our listing of the starting lineups, Michael Lewis is in the starting lineup. Just 40 assists away from passing Quinn Buckner in the all-time Indiana assist list. And Joel Prisbilla will be in the center circle with Kirk Haston. Pat pulled back, and Lewis knifes in to make the steal and picks up the first foul of the game on Dusty Reichert. Michael Lewis quickly gathering in the tap from Joel Prisbilla. There you look at the series history. Indiana with the lead, but Minnesota has the series lead here in Minneapolis. So Lewis will go to the line for two free throws. Heads up play there by Lewis. He cut between two Minnesota players, stole that ball, and got the free throw. That's another $50 for the Indiana University General Scholarship Fund from Union Planners Bank. This season, Union Planners will donate $50 for every free throw that the Hoosiers make. This season's total now $17,900. Reichert swings left side. Bickerstaff working inside to Prisbilla. Short off the glass. It comes back to the big man, and he ties it up. Now well, that's what Minnesota is looking for. They got the ball low to him. Even though he missed that first shot, he followed up well to tie the score. Haston, Fife cutting inside over Reichert, and Brazilla cleans up the rebound. Up the floor, Bickerstaff on the run, puts Minnesota in front. Minnesota looks like they want to run when they can. They just beat Indiana down the floor to get the lead. Burleson fights through a couple of picks to stay with Guyton. Riker rebounds. One shot and out for Indiana in their first two shooting possessions. Simmons spins to the glass, and Haston is fouled by Prisbilla. You can see Minnesota's going to play the up-tempo game. They know the things they tried in Bloomington didn't work, so they tried to do some different things, and it's to get the rebound. They've got good size with Riker and Prisbilla inside. Get it out. Beat Indiana down the floor. Now a press. Pass tip by Reichert. Guyton back to Lewis. Rolled up the middle. Bickerstaff dives, and now here come the Hoosiers. Four on two. Hastings, 12 footer, ties the game. Zone press by Minnesota, Indiana, with a lucky pass. It bounced off a leg to a Hoosier, and they score. And Munson talked all week and in advance of this game of trying to establish the tempo. Bickerstaff. 
Cuts in, loses it on the way up, and Haston picks up the loose ball. Fife quickly up the floor, and the Hoosiers run one on Minnesota. Well, Fife's known for his defense primarily, but this time he beats the Gophers down and a quick timeout. And it's, I believe, an injury to Terrence Simmons that causes the timeout. Fife leading Indiana up the floor and puts the Hoosiers in the lead. Quick injury situation for Minnesota. Mitch Onstadt replacing Terrence Simmons, who came out of the game. Then Minnesota turned it over, and now Bickerstaff, who turned it over the last time up the floor, turns it over again. So three turnovers for Minnesota in the opening two minutes and ten seconds through Guyton's hands, picked up by Riker. And the play's gotten a little sloppy here. Yeah, both teams turning it over. Bickerstaff having a tough time hanging out of the basketball right now. Chris Bill a double team. Nobody there for Bickerstaff to pass off to. Burleson drives on Guyton and banks it in. Minnesota much more aggressive going to the basket and trying to score some points. He only got 65 in Bloomington. And they want to score more points tonight. Six apiece, just about three minutes into the game. Guyton's first shot is good. A three for A.J. Guyton. Comes off that screen so well, and they're moving to his left, which is tough for a right-handed shooter, but able to make it. And another Minnesota turnover, the fourth Gopher turnover in the first half in Bloomington about four weeks ago. The Gophers turned it over 12 times in the first half, and there really wasn't much of a game to be played in the second half at all because of that. Bickerstaff out. And Shane Schilling in for Minnesota. Pressure defense has been the difference for Indiana this year. They're holding their opponents just under 70 points a ball game. And it's uh, helped them now to a 17 and 3 record. Washington with an offensive foul. Well, that's not the type of offense Indiana wants to run with Washington on the drive. There you see the play. Prisbilla moved his feet well. Washington lowers the shoulder and gets called for the foul. A good call, but had it gone the other way, it would have been Prisbilla's second foul, and that would have been a critical situation for Minnesota. They simply have to have him on the floor to have any chance at all here tonight. On stack, cut off by Haston. Prisbilla from Schilling in a traveling call. It's the fifth Minnesota turnover, and they're fourth in a row. Well, Indiana knows they're going to try to go to Prisbilla, and as soon as he gets the ball, two or three guys converge. That time, it caused a turnover. So the Hoosiers with the ball and a three-point lead. Haston misses, and there's a bump underneath. Want to alert our station's along the line that our first commercial break will be break number three. Foul called on Minnesota's Dusty Reichert and that is his second foul. So with 16.08 left, Reichert will sit for most of this first half with two fouls. Reichert's had a problem with that this year. Early first half foul trouble. Hastings hook is good. Boy, quick move on that hook shot to the baseline. Even though Chris Billa has several inches, he's been able to get that shot away. Minnesota going with its largest lineup. Sandin and Chris Billa. Kyle Sandin at 6'11". Joel Chris Billa at 7'1". Both on the floor now. Shane Schilling airs one. And Lewis picks up the rebound. Indiana on a little five-point run here. Now Washington picks up a foul. Indiana will also run when they get the chance. Lewis, a nice heady play, and the foul inside against Minnesota. Foul called on Shane Schilling, number 34. He, nobody picks Washington up. He goes right down the lane, and the foul on Schilling. Washington. Lynn Washington to the line. And 
Indiana three of three from the line. Five seniors on this Indiana team, Lynn Washington being one of them. Junior college transfer playing a second year for the Hoosiers. It was tied at six. Now the Hoosiers have run off seven straight points. Let's check out the Arvinator brought to you by Arvin Industries. With Indiana leading Minnesota by seven. Here's how Minnesota got a basket. Watch Chris Bill. The players know that he knows how to rebound. They sneak down. And it leaves Minnesota all alone. They have great confidence in Pris Billa's rebounding ability, and it got him an easy basket. One of just three for the Gophers. They've turned it over four the last five times down the floor. Now Terrence Simmons off the bench for Minnesota, replacing Kevin Burleson. Pris Billa back to Onstad. Lewis covers his three, so they go back inside. Schilling picking up the loose ball, but it won't drop for him. Sandin and Haston tie up. Arrow pointing Minnesota's way. You can see the advantage of having the two big guys in there. Sandin going 6'11", 265. And Minnesota pounding those offensive boards. Five turnovers now for the Gophers in their first 12 possessions. They're shooting well, but the turnovers have prevented them from getting more shots. Referees now have a question. Donnie Gray and Sam Licklider, uh, Licklider have a little bit of a Not chat. Sure what that was about. But on the possession arrow, Minnesota has the ball out of bounds. Prisbilla and Simmons, the only starters left on the floor. Sandin's left-handed shot too strong, but Prisbilla uses both to score. Boy, you got to like that guy. Only a sophomore and playing so well for these Gophers to stretch those arms to get that dunk put back. Dane Fife now to Haston. And Schilling steals the dribble away. Finds Onstad up the floor, and Onstad runs it up for Minnesota. There's the Minnesota game plan when you have the turnover, the rebound. Let's get the ball down quickly before Indiana sets up that pressure defense. Guyton fakes the three, got Simmons up in the air, and Guyton misses. Prisbilla rebounds, and the Gophers look to run again, but this time the Hoosiers are back. Well, Prisbilla really something on the boards, not just on the defensive end, also offensively. Tried to jam it inside to Sandin. Tipped away by a couple of Indiana players. Guyton over Schilling. Didn't really see an opening there, Dick, and he just pulls up, puts that little leg up. That means he wasn't on balance when he left his feet, and that helps get it sustain his balance and makes the tough jump shot. Prisbilla back to Sandin on the run, and the Paul goaltending. Beautiful three-man passing play for the Gophers. And Minnesota's offense really picked up here in the early stages, except for those turnovers. So when they're able to run the plays and the sets they want, especially using the big guys inside, they have been able to score. Let's watch now. Prisbilla comes out, head up, looking the weak side, and Sandin gets the goaltending call. Washington reaches through the basket to block that ball. Lewis brings it up for the Hoosiers. Simmons bumping Guyton, trying to cover him. There's Guyton anyway. <laughs> Darren Simmons was bumping him all the way up the floor, and Guyton just ducked away to the corner and found himself wide open. Now Schilling tries to answer for Minnesota. A.J. Guyton with three threes, and it's a seven-point Indiana lead. Indiana has not missed the three-pointer yet. A hand check called on the perimeter. Minnesota's picked up its fifth foul of this first half. Indiana has just one. A little concerned by Dan Monson. It's just tough to guard Guyton. He's very quick. He can drive to the basket, so you got to put a little guy on him. But he can get those shots coming off those screens, as he's done already tonight. Guyton. Working off a screen, and now perhaps an illegal screen is called. Away from the ball, an Indiana foul. The Hoosiers' second of the game. Three seconds. Three, Three seconds. seconds was the call, I beg your pardon. So Minnesota trailing by seven. Nick Sinville in for the Gophers. 
Simmons takes the open jumper and comes up short. Terrence Simmons was very sharp with his outside shooting in the non-conference part of the schedule, but in Big Ten play, it's been a disappointment for Simmons, a junior in his second year with Minnesota. Haston hits a 15-footer for Haston. Three field goals and six points. He works well on the inside. You saw the hook shot earlier. He's also got a little turning jump shot. Schilling back to Onstadt for the three. That is short. Rebounded by Newton, who played so well against Minnesota up in Bloomington about four weeks ago. Nine point Indiana lead. Zone defense now by Minnesota. First time we've seen that tonight. 2 3 zone. Haston again open from 15 feet. This one comes off, and Sinville had the rebound, was falling out of bounds, and then spiked it against Newton's leg. Here in Minneapolis at Williams Arena, Indiana's run out to a nine point lead. Thanks to A.J. Guyton's three threes, leading by nine. And here come the ATA High Flyers. It'll be Joe Prisbilla. There you see in the left of your screen, the shot comes up. He's got the rebound and puts it right back in. Difference in the game, though. Three three-point baskets by A.J. Guyton. He's three for three outside the arc. Minnesota's yet to get a three-point basket in the first half. Having to play without Dusty Reichert for most of this first half because of early foul trouble. Sinville looks inside and Prisbilla is sandwiched by two players. Onstad off the glass hard. Rebound out to Simmons. Wrap around. Nice pass from Bickerstaff to Prisbilla. Well, it's tough to do that when you don't have that much room between you and the man you're passing to. And you got to have good hands. Prisbilla comes up with that one and gets the shot. 32, John Haston over Prisbilla. Guyton is right there. What a nice pass from Haston. I mean, there's so many ways that Guyton can score that makes it tough for the defenders. We've seen him outside driving, and now this time in the lane. Jeffrey Newton with a big block on Terrence Simmons. The Hoosiers lead the run, and Michael Lewis scores it for Indiana. Lewis now with four points, an 11 point Indiana lead, and a Minnesota timeout. Both teams doing some running. This will be break number five for our stations along the line with Indiana leading by 11 points here at Williams Arena. Four weeks ago, Jeffrey Newton had four blocks, and here against Terrence Simmons, he got his first of the night tonight. Goes up high, and good defense leads to offense. Guyton comes down the fast break. Lewis from the left side. That's his favorite side, and he gets the hoop. Game last tied at six since then. It's been all Indiana and a lot of Minnesota turnovers. Now a foul on Michael Lewis. And you see, we talked about runs at the beginning of this ball game, nine to two in the last two and a half minutes by Indiana. You have a tough time overcoming one big run. And in the first game between these two teams earlier this year, Indiana had two 18 to four runs in the game. And obviously on the road, you can't afford to have one of those, much less two. It's going to be a crucial time for Minnesota. They can't let this game get any farther away, even though there's over 10 minutes left in the first half. Sinville rebounded his own miss, but then lost it now up the floor to Guyton. And the Hoosiers are running at every opportunity. We talked about Minnesota changing the tempo, but now Indiana has really outrun Minnesota using those rebounds and turnovers to their advantage. Guyton with 13 points already. and We've only played a little over 10 minutes. Lewis guarding Simmons. Sinville again too strong. It tipped up nicely and in by Bickerstaff. Boy, only six foot six, but Bickerstaff timed that one well. Before Indiana could grab it, he tips it back in. That was a tough play. Bickerstaff's kind of got a, a power forwards game in a shooting guard's body. He's not much of a perimeter shooter at all. Oh, Hastings, the rebound to Newton. 
blocked by Bickerstaff, and he got the rebound. Now here come the Gophers. Well, two big plays in a row by Bickerstaff. Newton had an easy layup that Bickerstaff prevented. That's the extent of Bickerstaff's range, and he hit it. A rare jump shot attempted and made by Bickerstaff. You know, there's an example of defense building his confidence, and he went ahead and took that 15-footer, and now this crowd's in the ballgame. Stolen by Prisbilla. So what was a 13-point lead is down to nine. Onstad overshoots everything. And Lewis one-hands the rebound. Both he and Bickerstaff hit the deck. Guyton feeling it tonight. This one comes off. And Sinville is fouled by Hastings. We're in Minneapolis at Williams Arena with John Leskowski, Dick Bramer. Bringing you tonight's game between Indiana and Minnesota. Indiana winning handily in Bloomington. Minnesota really approaching the tough part of its schedule. Where Indiana right now in the middle of a three-game road stretch. They play in Ann Arbor on Sunday. And right now they're 2-2 two and two on the road in Big Ten play. And a chance for a, the lead in the Big Ten by game's end tonight. Simmons tries a three. Rebounded by Schilling. Feeding it across to Prisbella, too strong, and found the hole. I believe Schilling will get credit for it. Nice rebounding by Minnesota in tonight's game. And we mentioned a crucial part of the game, and Minnesota has responded exactly at the right time. Six-point run for Minnesota, cutting the lead to seven. Haston with that hook, too strong, rebounded by Prisbella. Outlet to Simmons. Bickerstaff to Prisbilla. Eighth in a row for Minnesota. Right. Minnesota really looks for Prisbilla on the inside. They know he's the guy that's going to carry him in the ball games, and they know where he is. He's always ready to catch the ball because of it. Prior to this run, this arena was eerily quiet. Now the fans are starting to get into it for the first time tonight. 8-0 now by Minnesota, so they've got an answer for Indiana's run right now. Newton picked up his dribble. Lewis covered from the line. Michael Lewis with eight points. Lewis was a big scorer in high school, led the state of Indiana in scoring, but called on to be more of an assist man in his career at Indiana. But he knows how to score if you leave him open. Sandin back in for Minnesota as the Gophers go big, and now the ball kicked out near midcourt where Schilling picks it up. Bickerstaff finds Prisbilla again. Ten for Prisbilla. And the lead is cut to five. That's the advantage of driving in the lane because as men come to help off, especially from Prisbilla, he's going to score. Haston. Misses. Sandin and Prisbilla were both there. Here come the Gophers. Simmons to Bickerstaff. Foul. And Bickerstaff will go to the line for two, and Bickerstaff is hurt on the play. Bickerstaff has been bothered all year long with tendonitis in both knees, and he appears to have injured his right knee on this play. Looked like when he was trying to go up, and then as well when he came down, it looked like he twisted that knee a little bit. He's still down under the Minnesota basket. Foul called on Guyton, his first, and Indiana's fourth. And he looks to be in uh, in some pain right there as he's trying to figure out how serious the injury is. Bickerstaff a transfer from Oregon. Of course, his father, Bernie Bickerstaff. Dan Munson will use this opportunity to try to coach his team here a little bit with Bickerstaff still... We saw him rebound so well in the mm -hmm. previous play when he tipped that ball in. You can see how he, he really didn't get up the ground very much at all there. Minnesota trainer Roger Shipper trying to offer some medical help, he advice. Voyager Bank, Voyager Bank has Gophers were down by 13 points, but. 
nice run has cut the lead now to five. There will be free throws. It doesn't look at this point as if Bickerstaff will be shooting them. And the unfortunate thing from Minnesota's standpoint, Bickerstaff has not moved since he went down. Holding that right knee, there's the two coaches. They meet to discuss the situation. It doesn't look like Bickerstaff will be able to shoot. So Monson will have a chance to bring someone in to shoot the free throws. But I think Dick it's also uh, good that they're taking time to deal well, with the injury. I mean these student athletes have to deal with a lot and uh, depending on how serious if they don't know how serious the injury is yet it's better to take their time and be cautious. It's been, have it analyzed. it's been such a struggle for Bickerstaff because he's had tendonitis in both knees. He missed a game earlier this year against Ohio State and he was starting to feel better and his play was better because of that. And now something apparently more serious than tendonitis and again J.B. Bickerstaff still has not has not moved. There's a former Hoosier in the crowd. That's Andre Patterson now with the Minnesota Timberwolves on the injury reserve lift or, or list or he'd be out in L.A. The Timberwolves play the Lakers tonight. And a good look at Andre who is uh, playing well here for the Timberwolves out right now. Not used to seeing him on the bench here at Williams Arena. He's sitting right behind the Indiana bench. As I recall he didn't spend much time on the bench when the Hoosiers came in here. No he played a lot. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. There's the Indiana bench. Uh, Former IU center Steve Downing right there lower left. There's Andre right behind Steve. We're going to bring a stretcher out for John Blair Bickerstaff. And uh, again we believe the injury to be to his right knee. Steve Downing led Indiana to the 1973 Final Four. They won the Big Ten Championship that year. And in a game against UCLA and Bill Walton. Downing had a terrific ball game. Got called for a fifth foul on a charge. It could have been a charge. It was called a block and downing around the game and UCLA went on to win that ball game and the chi the national championship in 73. There's the stretcher being brought out for Bickerstaff. He had to sit out a year because of the transfer from Oregon. And then of course had the problem with the tendonitis and John Blair Bickerstaff is going to be helped from the floor here. with an apparent injury to his right knee getting some help over there from Larry Richardson which is nice to see so we'll continue to have a delay here as Bickerstaff is being helped off the floor. You know the floor raised here at uh, Williams Arena about four feet mm -hmm. so they'll need to find the ramp area to get him down and and then looked at back in the locker room. It's one of the uh, quirks of this arena with the raised floor and you would think there would be uh, many incidents where players <laughs> have had to be helped uh, from the field to play here because of the uh, elevation of the floor but actually doesn't happen very often Bickerstaff did not fall off the end of the floor he just looked like he twisted his knee apparently severely running to the basket and the ovation for John Blair Bickerstaff here's some of the other scores of note in college basketball North Carolina a big rivalry with NC State right now a 10 point lead UConn with a big lead over Boston College. LSU leading Auburn. Great matchup there. And Kevin Burleson will be uh, shooting the free throws here. You see some of the other scores. Iowa and Ohio State, a, an important game for Hoosier fans. Well, Burleson now with three points. And if we're given word about the status of John Blair Bickerstaff, we'll be sure to pass that along to you as we move on through the game tonight. And a tough six minute stretch here now for these players. They both had an unusual timeout. Very long. And now another one. 
A 12-2 Minnesota run has taken a 13-point Indiana lead. Just a three-point lead for Indiana, and if this score and that score holds up, the Hoosiers will be leading the Big Ten come midnight tonight. Some of the other top 25 scores, Tennessee in a close ball game. Again, the press by Minnesota, and now the steal. Schilling bounced the ball over to Simmons. Offensive foul called on Simmons, and they wave the basket off. It's a big play right there. That basket did go. Dan Monson thinking Michael Lewis moved to his right. Good play by Minnesota. They steal the ball and turn right to the basket. Watch Lewis. There's the contact and the call. Zone press by Minnesota. Tough spot for five, one foot on each side of the line, but he did not get both feet over. So no turnover. Washington over Sandin, or Persville, I should say, scores. That's a funny feeling. You feel you're well guarded, but as you turn and pivot, all of a sudden the defense is on the wrong side, getting <laughs> an open 10-footer. So Indiana now with a five-point lead. Prisbilla tries the other side, cleans up his miss, and is fouled. Tell you, he's just big and strong in there. Seven foot one, 260, and just a sophomore. He'll have two more years. Watch how he moves in here well. Misses the shot, but stays right up there. Look at the reach on those arms. And then he gathers himself, goes up strong. And when you're seven foot one, guys are going to have to foul you to try to stop that play. And now the only thing he needs to work on is some free throw shoot. Foul called on Haste in his second. Had a great game from the line against Wisconsin. In fact, the whole Minnesota team. They shot free throws like the Hoosiers normally shoot them. 19 of 22. But Chris Villa in the game made his last six and finished seven of eight from the line. He's only One of two here. And that's uh, true to form, a 50% free throw shooter on the year. Sandin with the rebound. Burleson inside the arc, finds Simmons, Schilling, over a sand and screen, banks in a three, and it's a one-point game. Well, Minnesota's been trying to hit that three-pointer. Maybe it took a bank shot <laughs> to get that lid off the rim. And now a hold. Called away from the ball on Shane Schilling, and that is his second foul. Tough matchup for Shane, six foot six, 200, and a freshman. He's going against 6'8", 220, Larry Richardson, who's a senior. And Shane Schilling picks up the foul there. Minnesota still on that nice run, 16 to four, over the last four and a half minutes. Dane Fife at the line for a one and one opportunity. That foul on Schilling, the seventh Minnesota foul. So the first bonus situation of the night. Three points for Fife. He only averages about five and a half points a ball game. He's in there for some defense. Also very good in steals, which then lead to the fast break for Indiana. Fife's father, Danny, of course, played baseball here in Minnesota for the Minnesota Twins. Leads back to three. Chris Bill a double team, lost it. Lewis just reached in and stripped it away from him. Now Chris Bill bats the pass to Onstad. Oh, what a great defensive play there. Indiana had a wide open three point shot and quick reflexes by Chris Bill caused the turnover. Sandon squares to the basket. Ian Burleson play catch, now a drop for Onstad who lost it on the floor and it bounced to Washington. Well, Washington missed Dane Five ahead of the pack. Guyton's been quiet recently and Indiana has not scored well. Ball was tipped, so that's why it's not over and back. Well, Burleson and Guyton really going at it. And the screen on Richardson was moving. And give Burleson credit. He is doing all he can to stay with A.J. Guyton. And he looks like it. He's a little tired. <laughs> We've got a timeout with Minnesota. 
getting the ball when we come back down by three at Williams Arena. Team, they're trying to get back into the lead here and pull off an upset. The Hoosiers have accommodated them with nine turnovers. Here's the moving screen by Richardson. He moved to his right. Burleson bumps into him. And the foul, easy call. Well, Minnesota three-point basket away from tying the game. Burleson, one hands a two, short. Rebound, tip to Sinville. Fake, shot blocked inside, and now Sinville again, short with the hook, and it finally falls free to Guyton. Three shots for Minnesota, and only one touched the rim. And Minnesota's not shooting very well, Dick, but they're making up for it with the rebounds, getting some extra shots. Lewis with a great recovery just to tie that ball up. Fife threw him a very tough pass to catch, and Lewis ran to the sideline, one-handed the catch, and because the arrow's pointing Indiana's way, he, look at this effort by Michael Lewis. He tries to stay with it, Burleson right on top of him. Indiana possession arrow, they retain the ball. Prisbilla. Covers the baseline. Richardson travels. Another Indiana turnover, number 10. Well, he does move well, too, for seven foot one. That's a tough play. Has to shut the baseline down on a quicker player, Richardson, and Prisbilla able to do it. This is now Minnesota's third chance to tie the game. Third possession. Onstead dribbles through the baseline. This will tie it if it's good. And the Gophers have been short on the perimeter all game long. Just one of six now on three-point shooting by Minnesota. Michael Lewis with eight points. Michael Lewis. He did that all by himself as he got around Prisbilla. Dribbled right up the lane. Now Schilling needs some help. The Indiana double teams the ball when it's in the, in the lane area. Especially on Prisbilla. Sinville goes up strong and scores, and he drew a foul to boot. Minnesota's had the most success when they're able to work the ball inside. Even though they missed the first shot, it's the second chance opportunities that's getting in their points. Look at the pass by Burleson. Sinville goes up, and he doesn't gets the foul and the basket. What's remarkable about this comeback for Minnesota? They've done it without J.B. Bickerstaff and without Dusty Reichert. He left three and a half minutes into the game with his second foul and hasn't been seen or heard from since. Bill misses to the right. And it's a three-point Indiana lead. Guyton open. Short. Rebound out to Lewis. He's been all over the floor for the Hoosiers in this first half. Washington tips the rebound out, and then Lewis and Washington end up in a pile. Well, Lewis is bent on getting that ball no matter where it is, and he's upset with Richardson because Lewis had the rebound. Richardson caused the turnover by falling on top of Lewis. I know Guyton's got 13 points, but I think in his first half, Michael Lewis has been Indiana's best player. Richardson keeps it alive. Now, Lewis is going after it. He wants to go right back to the basket, and Richardson slides right into him. Lewis comes out. Fourth Minnesota possession where a three could tie the game. Burleson fakes the three. Loses the ball on the way up to the shot. Sandin with a great save to Schilling. Ten seconds to shoot. Burleson to tie it up. Almost banked that one in. And Sandin's called for a foul. And he doesn't believe it. Sandin and Richardson were side by side. And that ball came hard off the backboard. Smile from Dan Monson. That ball, that shot way outside. Watch Richardson. Yeah, that's close. They're both there side by side. And the call goes against Sandin. Sandin playing in just his fourth game of the year. Had some academic issues to clear up. 
first missed Indiana free throw and Sandin gets the rebound and now he'll go to the line he's fouled by five. Well, Dan Monson is up he likes the way the Gophers have come back here only trailing it by three. Not a smart foul by five he comes all the way across the lane to try to get some help the ball's high but he just reaches around the back and that's an easy call to make. Jeffrey Newton in for Indiana replacing Fife as the Hoosiers go a little bit bigger. Although Haston has been out for a good part of this first half as well with a couple of fouls. Missed one and one by Sandin. Minnesota shot free throws awfully well against Wisconsin on Saturday. Now some costly misses here in the first half. Luke Jimenez, a Minnesota native from Redwood Falls, Minnesota, in for the Hoosiers. Right, nice defense by Burleson. Look how far he forced Guyton now to get that ball. And there he deflects it away. And the crowd appreciating that. Down low, Washington stopped by Sandin and he traveled. Sandin came over with some help defense and he just forced the 13th Indiana turnover. And you got to credit the Minnesota defense with a lot of those. They have put the pressure on Indiana to force those. And Indiana makes a substitution. Jared Odell comes in the ball game. Let's watch. Here's the opening by Washington. He thinks he's got an open lane, but there he moves his foot when Sandin comes over to double team. Minnesota can take the last shot here and if they can well for that matter it's probably been a good half for them given everything they've had to endure in this half to be down by just three but they can still tie the game prior to halftime. Now ten seconds left and they'll get into their offense. Burleson. Find Sandin wide open underneath to close out the half. Bob Knight furious with Jared Odell. Indiana led by 13 points when John Blair Bickerstaff. Indiana's halftime lead here tonight just a point and coming from a coming back from a 13 point deficit is exhausting enough but when you are as thin as Minnesota is to begin with and you lose one of your key players J.B. Bickerstaff John you wonder whether fatigue might be a factor in this second half it might Onstead had 15 minutes Schilling had 13 they normally don't get that many minutes for a Minnesota lead Prisbilla stuffs the rebound in. And just a clarification of the point, Donnie Gray saying that was a two-point basket for Prisbilla, not a three-point basket by Burleson. So the comeback for Minnesota is complete. Newton banks it in, and Indiana has the lead back. An aggressive move, move by Newton that time to counteract the Minnesota basket. But the Gophers know they're in the ball game, and it's right where they want to be. Shane Schilling starting the second half. Pass zipped into the lane intended for Burleson. It's tipped out of bounds. Take a look at uh, an ATA high flyer. It's Pris Bill on the rebound. Watch him there, number 50. He got, in, he got inside position on Haston. Goes up strong with it. Ball's just outside the rim. They and forgot about Shane Schilling. Wide open underneath on the inbound. Oh, Indiana making some mental errors. The last basket of the half. Now this one, that's four points they've given to Minnesota. 
And it's the Gophers by one. Newton again. And an offensive foul as Schilling hits the deck. Schilling playing in place of the injured J.B. Bickerstaff. And the freshman is starting to emerge in this game. He's 6'6", 200, a freshman. There's the drive by Newton and Schilling right there to take the charge. And not easy to do when a guy's 6'9", coming at you. Riker picks off the pass that might have been intended for Schilling. Triple teamed and lost inside. Guyton spins away and finds Haston. Rebound tip back to Guyton. Three ball. Missing everything and Prisbilla gets the rebound. Bounce pass to Riker. Rebounded by Haston. Lewis was back. And just distracted Riker enough that he missed the shot. And now another foul charging by Indiana. Lewis crashes into Prisbilla. And the first two second half fouls go against the Hoosiers. Here's Lewis coming right at you. There's Riker. He had his body turned to the side. Usually you see him straight on. But if he's still in position and he gets hit, that's still charging. Riker only played four minutes in the first half because of two fouls. Two early fouls. Because Bella and Haston bump each other on the post. Tough pass tipped away by Haston. One that Reichert never should have pulled the trigger on. Blocking foul called on Reichert, and now he's got three. You can see Indiana's decided to let Newton drive to the basket. Third time in a row now. He's tried to get to the goal, and Riker picks up the foul that time. That's a big one. So tough, isn't it, John, to have to sit for the last 16 minutes of a half and then try to find your rhythm early in the next half? And especially being a long half with the injury, probably six, seven right. minutes, the game was delayed because of the injury to Bickerstaff. Luke Jimenez beating Guyton. Stripped away by Schilling. Boy, a great defensive play there. He knocked that ball away. That was ready to shoot. Ferguson to Prisbilla, and Minnesota has its largest lead. Jimenez feeding Haston. The hook blocked by Prisbilla, out of bounds to Indiana. That time, Prisbilla was able to cover the hook shot. Boy, he timed it well, but let's watch the play at the other end. Schilling. The pass to the corner, and then Burleson right up with it. Prisbilla hustling down for that basket. Five covered by Burleson. Stolen away by Simmons, but he can't keep it from going out of bounds. A block and a near steal for Minnesota, yet the Hoosiers still have the ball. And Guyton getting some coaching along the Indiana bench. Bob Knight not pleased at all with the effort the Hoosiers have put out in this second half. Lewis rebounded by Prisbilla. Riker back to Simmons. Burleson feeding Simmons in the corner. Well, Minnesota's got it going now. That's Simmons on a three to give Minnesota the six-point lead. And they've outscored Indiana 9-2 to in this second half. For Simmons, his first points of the night. And now Haston answers for Indiana. Haston with eight. They have momentum definitely, though, in Minnesota's favor right now, and that's the guy they want to go to. 17 for Prisbilla and six already in the second half. Indiana now is effective on the double teams with Chris Bill, and he's going to get called for a foul. Let's see. A double foul, I believe, on Haston and Chris Bill. That is. Double foul. You don't see him very often, but the official feels that both players are making the contact. Uh, that's a good call. Running down the floor, side by side. Haston puts his hand out. Now Chris Billa holds. Now they're both moving back. Not a lot there. But it does do a good job of calming things down by giving them each a foul. 
For Chris Billa, it was his second foul. For Haston, his third. And Haston stays in the game and scores. He's got 10 points. If you have to foul just one player in that situation, then somebody gets upset. Riker with a touch pass inside again to Prisbella. 19 points for Prisbella, a six point Minnesota lead, and the barn is. Touch pass inside. Joel Prisbill with eight points already in the second half. Let's check out one of his buckets on the Arvinator, brought to you by Arvin Industries. He's got position on the inside right here. Burleson's going to make the pass up high. And there it is. And Minnesota now leads by six, putting on some full court pressure. Indiana going with a three guard lineup here. Guyton loses it off his right hand out of bounds. Try to catch that with one hand. Instead of putting two hands on the ball, the ball goes off his hand. And a turnover for Indiana. Minnesota has not substituted yet in this second half. And now Guyton with a steal. A soft pass from Prisbilla. And the forward foul on Prisbilla and the bucket to Guyton. Boy, that is a big play because Prisbilla looked like he laid off a little bit because he didn't want to pick up that foul. And he was surprised when the call went against him. So was Dan Munson. Guyton had the uh, right arm out to make the steal. Now he's sizing up the situation. He puts the ball in the left oh, hand. Boy. And not much there as Prisbilla gets called for the foul. So a three-point play for Guyton, and it's a four-point minute, excuse me, three-point Minnesota lead. And now a touch, foul, hand check, called on Fife. at the fourth Indiana foul of the half. Can't rest that hand on the hip of the player on the dribble. Fife did and got called for the foul. And now... Kyle Hornsby into the ball game for the first time. Just a freshman. Freshman. Good shooter from the outside. Indiana's trying to figure out how to get some more points on the board. Burleson turned down a three-point attempt. Thrown two call for Prisbilla, and that's saying something. Haston wants the ball on Prisbilla. Going after that fourth foul, and Prisbilla has to guard him soft because of his three fouls, and Haston gets the bucket. A dozen for Haston. That's why that foul was so big against Guyton, because now Haston knows that Prisbilla has three, and he's going to go right after him every time. Simmons for three more. Comes out. Nobody there to rebound for Minnesota. For Indiana, Jeffrey Newton gets the rebound, and now the Hoosiers with a conversion here can retake the lead. We talked about the runs. Both teams have had them. Short with the hook, back to Haston. Short again. A third try, no good. And finally the foul on Reichert, and now that's his fourth. Haston, the last two times down the floor, has taken this game under his control. Took Chris Bill to the hole the first time, and now Reichert picks up the foul. So two heads-up plays by Kirk Haston. Haston will get two free throws, and then Minnesota will bring Kyle Sandin into the game for Reichert. So now, Indiana with a run of seven to tie the game at 47. And again, Reichert has to sit in the second half as he did in the first half. Indiana with the lead. And Minnesota going with the big lineup now, Sandin and Prisbilla. Both on the floor. They were together for nine minutes in the first half. Prisbilla back outside to a Burleson three. And his first three, and he's got seven points. Well, Burleson's let his defense lead his offense. He's staying on Guyton and then be, being ready on the offensive end as well. Newton kept one foot anchored. 
Good no call. Now a whistle going. and a foul on Minnesota. Kevin Burleson with a hold on the baseline. It's a tough job because Guyton's going to come off picks, trying to get that jump shot. Burleson doing what he can to stay with him. But I'll tell you, after today's ball game, Burleson will be a much better defensive player after having to try to stay with A.J. Guyton. We talked about the fatigue factor for Minnesota. That it, there is this for the Gophers. They do not play this weekend. Their next game is, in fact, next Thursday. So they can leave it all on the floor here tonight. Guyton hearing the air ball chant. Onstad in for Minnesota, replacing Shane Schilling. Guyton hanging in the air. Rebounded by Hornsby. Another bad miss. Newton finds Lewis, who puts the Hoosiers into a tie game at 50. There's a hustle basket by Indiana. The ball just kept going their way. Sandin can hit from out there. This one comes off. There's Chris Bella. Five field goals in the second half and 21 points for the sophomore from Monticello. Lewis will go to the line, and a foul's call on Minnesota's Onstad. Boy, the sixth some, Minnesota foul of the half. Some great playing going on right now, both sides of the floor. Let's watch this Sandin shot. Chris Bella doesn't have real good position here. Look at those arms. Reaches right behind the head of Haston to get that rebound. Guyton off the screen on the inbounds, buries a three, and the Hoosiers have the lead. Chris Villa tried to come out to put some pressure on that shot, but Guyton got it away. Chris Villa now on stat to Simmons. He wants three more. Rebound tipped out to Simmons. Now loose ball kicked by Guyton. And he can't save it in the corner. It'll go to Minnesota. And is A.J. Guyton all right? He's fine, just a little frustrated. Kicked that ball about the half court line, or he could have just picked it up, and then he couldn't chase it down at the baseline. Lewis then ended up in about the second row. This is the makings of the most entertaining half of basketball I've seen this year. What a great half. They're playing hard, and, uh, you know, they don't know they're tired yet. They just keep playing. Burleson. Screen from Sandin. And now Prisbella. There's the double team. Now on stats open. Can't hit it. Easton rebounds. So a missed chance for Minnesota. Hornsby back outside to Haston. And a travel. Kyle Hornsby seeing extensive playing time here in the second half in a key game. Both teams hustling, and the lead is going back and forth. Northwestern with a 12-point lead in a non-conference game. Illinois at home leading Michigan. There's A.J. Guyton. He hasn't got the touch yet here in this second half like he did in the first. But Indiana could be in fine position with Michigan State losing yesterday, Ohio State behind. This becomes a very important game for the Hoosiers. Tough pass to the corner. Onstadt was able to catch it. Sandin drops it to Prisbilla. Scores. Turn about fair play. Hastings got three fouls, too. He does everything well, though. That time dribbling to his left. That's tough for a big guy, but he kept himself under control and got the shot. Minnesota by one. Wide open as Hornsby. Burleson left him alone out there, and he missed the shot. Hornsby can make that shot. Just happened to get that one away. Oh. Too hard off the glass. Tipped out. Onstadt scoops it up. Minnesota regains possession. Minnesota still hustling, and they still have more offensive rebounds than they do defensive rebounds. Haston gets the loose ball. Up ahead to Guyton. Simmons is back there. Guyton tipped up and in by Hornsby. That good play by Hornsby. Burleson only six foot three, and Hornsby at six five got the jump on him, able to tip it in. It seemed like we played 16 minutes in the second half already. We're not even halfway home. Burleson cuts to the baseline. Tipped by Prisbilla. Nobody can stop him. He's got 14 points in the second half, 25 in the game. 
He's having one of those nights. The ball's coming his way, and he knows what to do with it when he gets it. Hornsby with Burleson guarding him. Now Guyton with Onstack guarding him. Tough and shot. A.J. Guyton got sanding up in the air and then just leaned into the lane and put that soft touch into the net. Well, you can tell what kind of job Burleson did on Guyton because it was tough for him to get the shot. That time, Guyton created his own shot. Now a hold on Lewis. That's the fifth Indiana foul of the second half. And a great second half it is from Williams Arena. Glad you're with us, Dick Bramer and John Laskowski. Indiana coming into this game ranked ninth in the nation. Had a 13-point lead midway through this first half, but the Gophers have scrapped back into the game and at times have had a lead of as many as seven points. The last time Indiana, last three times Indiana has come up to Williams Arena, ranked in the top 25, Minnesota has won the game. Last year they ranked number 20, this year number 10. Onstad left all alone and he couldn't find the inside of the rim. Now they may be starting to feel a little tired. Both teams missing their shots. Guyton on Schilling. And Schilling picks up his third foul and that'll send Guyton to the line. That's the seventh Minnesota foul. So we'll see a lot of Indiana free throws here with 9.07 left. It's a big part of Indiana's offense are the free throws. And the other thing it does is give both teams a chance to rest at the line. Bob Knight ponders his next move. But Guyton has realized this game's going to be close all the way. He's picked up his offensive output for Indiana. He knew that was missed from the time he let it go. 13 points in the first half. Four three-point baskets. 76% free throw shooter. Uh, Two-point lead for the Hoosiers. That dribbles inside the arc. Simmons tries a three. Rebound on a bounce to Richardson. And now Sinville called for a foul as he got tangled up with Haston and threw him to the deck. Late contact there as play was already down to the midcourt line, but Sinville and Haston caught, be caught up uh, under the basket. And costly because the foul occurred 80 feet from the basket. And now Haston's going to go to the line for a one and one. Could be a big part of this game, Dick, as Indiana going to the line so early here in the second half. Well, not, not early, but before Minnesota's able to. Hey, 78% uh, free throw shooter. That's another $50 for the Indiana University General Scholarship Fund from Union Planners Bank. This season, Union Planners will donate $50 for every free throw that the Hoosiers make. Four straight made free throws for Haston here in the second half. Indiana 12 of 14 from the line. Onstadt timid in taking the shot because he's struggling with his jump shot. Schilling is not. In and out. Rebounded by Guyton. And every rebound is a battle as Minnesota continues to crash the board. Haston over Sinville. He lost Prisbilla along the way. Minnesota might need a timeout. And they take one. Haston with 18 points, a dozen in the second half, and Indiana now with a six point lead. And this 30 second timeout brought to you by Arvin Industries. One lucky student will win an air touch. There you see the winning trends. Indiana 16 and 0. When they lead at the half, they had the narrowest of leads this game at one by one point. And also when they hold their point less than 40 percent right now, Minnesota just above that 40 percent mark. Dan Munson exhorting his troops. There's not a senior in the Minnesota huddle. They've not gotten one minute of play from a senior this year. And then one of their juniors, J.B. Bickerstaff, hurt in the first half. A right knee injury is taken to a local hospital for further examination. And uh, if we get any further word, we'll pass that along to you. In the meantime, Joel Prisbilla 
has almost done it single handedly for Minnesota but not as of late. Minnesota going through one of those spells they hope to minimize here tonight. Reichert back in for Minnesota. He's got four fouls, but Dan Monson can't wait any longer. This game is on the line. And to shoot. Reichert takes the shot. Rebound to the floor, controlled finally by Terrence Simmons. Prisvilla got a hand on it. And the new shot clock. Schilling to Prisbilla. Washington pushes him out. Schilling, tough pass between the legs of Simmons. And a Minnesota turnover. Number 16 on the night for the Gophers. See a new play set up by Indiana. They sent two players down to screen on Guyton. And he missed the shot. Wide open along the baseline. Jimenez fed him with a bounce pass and he missed it. Simmons stopped by Jimenez. Reichert's trying to go down into Prisbilla, but Indiana's got two men on him right now. They want Reichert to take that shot. And Houston on the ball at 6-11. Give and go. Reichert scores from Prisbilla. That's smart play by Prisbilla. If he's double teamed, somebody's got to be open. And he found Reichert to the basket. Reichert's first points of the night. Ian Simmons have had off nights for different reasons. Six and a half minutes to play. Guyton knifes his way in the lane and scores. Nice spin move that time by Guyton. And he gets the soft roll. Indiana by six. 24 for A.J. Guyton. On stats pass tipped by Guyton. It'll go to Minnesota with 6.07 left in the second half. Indiana leading by six. Great second half here in Minneapolis. Indiana up by six. Let's check out the Arvinator brought to you by Arvin Industries. Here's a good two-man basketball. The ball's going to come right in here. If your man double teams, you cut to the basket, and you'll end up with a layup. That's what Dusty Riker did. There's his cut to the basket. Haston turns his head, layup for Riker. Minnesota will play for a while now without Joel Prisbilla. Not for very long, you would assume. Schilling drives, blocked by Haston Reichert, the first man of the ball. Onstadt down low to Sandin. Prisbilla played 19 minutes in the first half. Now Sandin tried to hit a cutting Onstadt and fired the pass out of bounds. Prisbilla, Prisbilla might be asked to play 19 minutes in the second half as well. There you see a great stat. His career high is 28 points. He's nearing that. Another double double. That's eight of the last 10 games. Eight of the last 11 games, double doubles for Chris Billup. Simmons rebounds Hastings' miss and then pops and misses himself. Rebounded by Washington. Chris Billup will come in at the next stoppage of play. You see both the possessions that Minnesota had without Chris Billup that came up empty. So he'll come right back in the game. Guyton got Schilling in the air, and Schilling blocked him anyway. And a timeout called by Guyton. Yeah, Bob Knight was off the Indiana bench. Guyton signaled the timeout as well before the traveling was called. All right, let's see. Here's Guyton. He steps. Shot fake is up, and a good block that time by Schilling. Guyton goes down. And then signals the timeout right there. I'm not sure he ever had a pivot foot. He might have had a pivot knee or something along those lines. 30 second timeout brought to you by McAllister Machinery, your local Caterpillar dealer. There you see 70, the magic number for Minnesota. They're 9 and 1 when they hold their opponent to 70 or less, but only 2 and 8 when they give up more than 70. Indiana now with 64 points. Indiana gets the basketball with still over five minutes left and a six-point lead. The timeout leaves both teams with three. So that, as of yet, not a factor. And I would expect Minnesota to use all its timeouts because of their thin bench. Hornsby fed it to Jimenez, who had the ball slip through his fingers into the hands of Simmons. 
Chris Bill and Sandin both on the floor for the Gophers. Burleson fakes the three, short on the two. Rebounded by Hornsby, who's seen an awful lot of playing time here in the second half. Didn't get much extension on that shot at the bottom part of the rim. That may be a sign of being tired. This looked like he wasn't sure he wanted to shoot and got hung up in the air and had no choice. Indiana slows the pace down now at their end of the floor. Time on the side of the Hoosiers. Hasten with 14 in the second half. Two Hoosiers with 20 or more points. Hasten and Guyton. Chris Villa looking for somebody to help him out in the scoring department. Critical possession for Minnesota down by eight. Schilling tries it. Hits a three! That's a big bucket for Minnesota. Cuts the lead to five. Minnesota's main offense is to Chris Villa, and they're looking for guys to score other than he. Ten points for Shane Schilling playing in place of John Blair Bickerstaff. Haston with a nice one-handed catch. Indiana will continue to look to Guyton. And Minnesota's perimeter defense again comes up short. It cost them the game Saturday against Wisconsin. That time Burleson a step too late. Big basket for Guyton. Schilling again at the other end. Shane Schilling with back-to-back -back threes, and it's back to a five-point game. His eighth, eighth and ninth three-pointers of the year, so he does, does not take many. He's not used to playing this much. Traveling on Guyton will turn it over to Minnesota. Guyton lost his balance. Turnover and a timeout. 19 Hoosier turnovers, a five-point Hoosier lead, and a great finish at Williams Arena. Indiana leading by five points. Time to announce our power player of the game, brought to you by Synergy PSI, where energy comes to life. And Joel Prisbilla, 22 in Bloomington back in January, and 25 so far here tonight. He's been tough for Indiana to stop. There he is, big number 50. Knows where that basket is, always looking for it. Easy tip that time for the big seven-footer. And his stamina was never in question, but he may have proved a few points <laughs> as to how much stamina he has. 19 minutes in the first half, he was out for about 30 seconds a few minutes ago, and unless he fouls out, he's probably gonna play the final 246 of this game, and any overtime that might be played. Well, each possession becomes crucial now. Minnesota's got five points to make up. Indiana's got the clock and the bonus free throw situation on their side. Chris Billa looks at Sandin, dribbles, spins, scores, and he gets fouled in the process. What a night for Joel Chris Billa. Just took his time. Indiana did not double team that time, and when he realized that, he just started backing Newton up. Finally went to his left shoulder for a soft bank shot. Foul on Larry Richardson, his second. There he goes. He was expecting a double team. Haston came over, but that left the spin back to the left open. Chris Billa, seven of eight Saturday night, one of three tonight from the free throw line. The only thing he hasn't done well tonight. Blocking foul on Schilling. That is his fourth. And that'll send freshman Jeffrey Newton to the free throw line, who's done a much better job shooting free throws as of late for Indiana. He's about an 80% free throw shooter in high school, only 43% here his first year at Indiana. But it was uh, it hovered around the 25% per, right. per, for the longest time this year. So he has done well lately. And it's a big front end of a one and one there. Minnesota with nine fouls, Indiana with just six. Those free throws look like they came from an 80% free thrower. Five point Indiana lead. Schilling, bounce pass to Prisbilla. 
through a double team, still scores! Oh, tough shot there, Richardson was in good position, and Chris Billa just that little baby hook shot, another two points. Nine field goals in the second half for Chris Billa, 29 points in the game, only one free throw. Timeout called by Lewis. A good timeout by Lewis as Guyton was hung up on the other side. He had no one to throw it to. Let's watch Chris Billy inside. He's got good hands. He stays low. Uses this fake. Look at that. Keeps his knees bent. Richardson can't stay with him. Look at the difference in size. And that's a tough shot. He's falling away from the basket. But a nice soft touch. 30-second timeout brought to you by Union Planters Bank. There you see Michael Lewis. He's on track to finish very close to Quinn Butker for the all-time Indiana record in assists. There's a look at Lewis, 24. Does usually start, you get to start in today's ball game. And he's in right now at the end of the ball game as well. Indiana likes to look to Guyton in these situations when the game is on the line. Just a three-point lead and see what he can do with it. Burleson is guarding him. It's a one-four set now by Indiana. Haston spins away from Sandin and scores. Minnesota at a point now where they need a stop. A minute and a half left. Sandin, a two is good. And six points for Kyle Sandin, and it's back to a three-point game. Tough shot by Sandin. Not normally the go-to guy, especially just playing a couple games back. But he makes the big shot. Let's watch him on the baseline. You know it's Chris Bill they want to go to. Look at Richardson right on him, and Haston stays in the line to help. Sandin's got to take that shot, and he hits it. Now Minnesota needs the stop. You're exactly right, Dick. Still a three-point lead, 117 left. And Haston was the guy who came through. They look for Guyton first. As you see, Haston goes to set the screen. Now clear out. That gives Haston a one-on-one -on -one move. He decides to go baseline. Tough shot. His body facing the baseline. Leans back to his right to get that shot away. Hit nothing but net. 22 for Haston, 27 for Guyton, 29 for Prisbella, career high for him. Minnesota putting on some full court pressure, haven't seen much of that at all in the second half. Indiana. Nearly thrown away, Jimenez with a nice tip to Lewis, and now Haston at the other end is fouled by Prisbella. No, the foul will go against Burleson. A near turnover in the backcourt, saved by Jimenez. Indiana gets the ball in the corner, and that's a tough spot. You know the double team's coming right away, and Guyton got it away, but then it had to be batted. Let's watch. Guyton in the corner. It's tipped by Jimenez right to Lewis, and now it's two on one. Indiana takes it right up, and the foul was low there by Burleson before any contact by Chris Billa. Mason four of four from the line in the second half. Guyton, the only Indiana player to have missed a free throw in the second half. Sinville out, Sandin in. And it's a two possession lead for the Hoosiers. Indiana goes to Guyton and Haston down the stretch. They're two top scores, and Haston comes through with two big free throws there. Six field goals, six free throws in the second half for Kirk Haston. One minute. Burleson a long three is good! That's a three for Kevin. And it's a two point in with just under a minute to play. Well, these Gophers just won't go away. They are in this ball game and know they've got the chance to pull the upset. Let's watch it. Comes out from the screen, Burleson, he's ready and knows that Gophers need some points and hits that one. big shot. Indiana, on the other hand, they want to run some clock now. Under a minute, just under a minute, 58 seconds. They want to run some clock. Minnesota really can't afford to take the foul because you don't want to give Indiana the one-on-one -on -one free throw. So they've got to play some good defense and the stop. This could be the most important possession of the ball game. Indiana, in fact, into the double bonus situation already. So there's uh, two free throws waiting for Indiana with every Minnesota foul. 
Minnesota's going to set up their press again, which nearly led to a turnover the last time. Indiana up there with that three guard lineup. Jimenez in the middle. He finds Guyton. Two on now one again. Freshman Newton. Haston blocked by Prisbilla. Stolen by Burleson. Chilling for a Minnesota lead. Prisbilla with the rebound. The putback ties it up. Prisbilla again having a career game. This could be the final possession. What a second half. A four-second overlap between the shot clock and the game clock. Lewis to Jimenez. Haston. Short. Haston again. Rebounded by Simmons. Ten seconds left. No Minnesota timeout. Simmons fights for his villa. Minnesota has the lead. What a comeback by the Gophers. Timeout is called, 3.9 seconds left as Minnesota scored four points in a row to take the lead. 11 first half points for Prisbilla, 22 second half points. What a ball game, Minnesota never gave up even in the final minutes, it looked like Indiana had a comfortable lead, but some great shooting and great hustle. Let's watch Indiana last time down the floor. Jimenez, a good shot by Haston. Then he follows his shot. Put back right there. He missed it. And Simmons comes down. Look at Newton. He gets tangled up. And Simmons brings it right down. Tough shot there. He passes it. And Prisbilla is right there wide open. This building's been around for nearly 100 years. It's never been louder. Minnesota lost a heartbreaker Saturday here against Wisconsin, a chance for a huge upset against Indiana. Lewis, Guyton, for an Indiana win, Minnesota pulls off the...